Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to try to determine for which values of x this series will converge. The way we're going to do that is by finding, let's see, the ratio, and then as n goes to infinity, we we'll want that ratio to go, of course, to zero, to the smallest number possible. And here's the series. Here's the infinite series, 1 over n times the quantity x minus 2 to the n power. So the n term is a to the n equals 1 over n times x minus 2 to the n power. So the ratio test is going to be done by saying the limit as n goes to infinity, we want to let the ratio go to zero. That's the idea, right? That's what we're trying to find. So let's find the ratio of this and then find the limit as n goes to infinity. So the ratio is going to be equal to a to the a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. So the next term in the series divided by the previous term. So we're going to add 1 to every n. So that is equal to 1 over n plus 1 times x minus 2 to the n plus 1 power and divided by this term, which is 1 over n times x minus 2 to the n power. All right. Well, the x minus 2 will simplify to the following. Here we have, let's see, we can write this as n over n plus 1 times x minus 2 to the first power, because uh, if we write x minus 2 to the n plus 1 divided by n, we subtract exponents, we get x minus 2 to the first power. But what about the n divided by n plus 1? What do we do with that? Well, what we can do here is divide the n by n plus 1, we probably want to do it like this, n plus 1, so n goes into n one time, 1 times n plus 1 is n plus 1, when we subtract we get 0 minus 1, which is minus 1, so that means that n divided by n plus 1 can be written as n minus 1 over n plus 1, so let's do that instead because it makes it easier to find the limit, so the ratio is then going to be equal to the quantity 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 multiplied times x minus 2. And now we're going to take the limit. The limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 times x minus 2. So when n goes to infinity, 1 over n plus 1, well this will go to 0, and so then we end up with 1 times this or x minus 2. So in the limit, we see that the terms will converge down to x minus 2. So for which values will the whole series converge? Well, that is the, the necessary condition then is that the absolute value of x minus 2 must be less than 1. And we can solve that by saying that means, therefore, when this is a positive value, x minus 2 must be less than 1, and if this is a negative value, then we can say that x minus 2 must be greater than negative 1, and that must be an AND condition. Both of these must be true. If that's the case, we then say that when we bring the 2 across, we get x must be less than 3, and x must be greater than 1, which means that only if the value of x is between 1 and 3, then this series will converge. So therefore, we know that 1 must be less than x, which must be less than 3. And for that range between 1 and 3, for those values of x, this series will indeed converge. And one more note, we can also solve for something like this in the following fashion. What we can do is we can simply place this value between the negative and positive value of 1. And so this can then be also solved in the following fashion. We can say that negative 1 must be less than what's in here, x minus 2, which is less than the value there, 1. And of course, then you add 2 to the left, to the middle, and to the right. Add 2 to this one, you get plus 1, less than. Add 2 to this, you get x. Add to this, you get 3. And so that's another way of solving these absolute value inequality type of problems. You can solve it using this technique, or you can solve it using that technique, just in case you want to see different ways of solving that. 